morning everybody well it's morning in my world I don't know about yours but it's um, I don't know 10 30 11 o'clock it's a beautiful fall morning here in Utah today's project I've been putting off for a while I've known I need to do it I've been doing a lot of research on it. I'm a little bit nervous to do it I'm hoping it goes pretty well it's mechanical which I'm pretty decent at mechanics um, but I also know how mechanical stuff can go on old stuff things can go bad really quick so I'm a little bit nervous. The cutlass bearing is wore out. It doesn't look like it's been changed in a while. There's a lot of slop when you move the prop shaft up and down. I was, I read no more than the six, at sixteenth of an inch per inch of prop shaft diameter. We have a one inch shaft. There's definitely more than the sixteenth inch of play. So that's today's project. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So here's our prop. It's a feathering prop. That's about all I know about it. But here is our cutlass bearing, and if you've noticed, I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's quite a bit of play in there. My major concern is getting these set screws out. There's one here, there's one here, and there's also two on the other side. I don't think they've been out in a while. They've definitely got some sort of sealant on top of them. I'm going to grab a pick or something and see if I can figure out how. easy. I feel like we're tearing into the sink more and more every day. <laughs> <laughs> you are. <laughs> like a slippery slope. We're going to unbolt the coupling unbolt from the, the transmission. Coupling from the transmission. Hopefully the shaft slides out a little bit and we can maybe we'll get lucky and we can just smack this around a little bit and it will come off the shaft. Oh that's all of them. Woo I've got the shaft coupling off the transmission. That went pretty well. That was pretty easy. The bolts came right off. I took the set screws. I took them all the way out because then I got thinking, okay, maybe there's a hole drilled in the shaft. You know, maybe I should check that out. Got the set screws out. Um, still won't come out. And here's my next problem is that, well, let me show you. Yes, I smacked it with a hammer. No, it didn't work. So here's the deal. I got this separated. Bloodied my knuckle up doing it. Here's my other dilemma. This, this bar, so they actually cut a strut out of the floor to get this transmission in when they redid the motor. It came with an Atomic 4. Now it's got a Westerbeek uh, 30, 30C, I think. A little diesel in it. This um, coupling won't go through the, through the metal plate. So, because it won't go through, um, I'm going to have to pull out this metal plate. Which is just more bolts, more stuff coming off the boat. It's crazy to me how this just... One little project. All I want to do is change the cutlass bearing. That's it. One thing. And it just expands into just, and now I gotta do this, now I gotta do this, now I gotta do that to get to it. But uh, it's all good. That's that's the life we have chosen to do. So that's that's just what we're gonna have to take care of. Oh, yeah so this is the polar i own i thought it was a three jaw apparently it's only a two jaw polar it's maybe six seven inches long unless my wife's been lying to me uh, she probably has um we're gonna put this on and we're gonna give her hell <clears throat> oh yeah there she comes that's easy. Oh, got it. Got it. I went back to look at the camera. That took 33 minutes. 
to pull that thing off. That was a lot of work. There she is. But I guess the good thing about the tartan is the motor's in sideways. There's no way the prop is gonna hit the rudder. All right, so check out this cutlass bearing. It's got some cracks here, like the ends coming off. It's got some cracks here inside these grooves. It looks pretty dry rotten. It looks like it's pretty wore out. There's a gap here. Uh, I don't know what that is about, but we'll sort it out. We'll figure out if we got to do something with that when we get this thing out. So I've done a little bit of research on this cutlass bearing on how people remove them. Everybody I read, or everything I have read, not everything, um, says the easiest way is to take a sawzall, cut the bearing in two spots, fold it on itself, and pull it out. So I think that's what we're going to try. I'm not too fond of the sawzall, so I just have a hacksaw blade. I mean, I'm pretty good with the sawzall, but I don't want to screw this up any more than it is, so I'm just going to slowly cut this out with a hacksaw. At least I'm going to try to. Let's see how this goes. There. Yeah, I don't want to go. See, the problem is I don't know how far I've cut back there. I don't think I have any skills. <laughs> Some skills. But not for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just came over here to verbally abuse you a little bit and then leave. <laughs> it's like, kids do, I right? guess that's what's happening. Is that what kids do? Verbally yep. abuse their parents and then just leave? Yep. So I've cut two slits in this bearing. One here. One here. It wasn't that bad pretty soft. Um, now I've got a drift, a punch, hammer. I think I'm going to try to punch through where the set screws go and see if I can't fold this in a little bit and grab it and yank this thing out. So I've got it I'm started, I got it folded, but I'm still struggling to get this thing out. But I'm pretty committed to it now, so I gotta keep figuring this, I gotta keep working this problem. Plan A did not work out so well for me. So we moved on to plan B, which was, you know, get a beer. So that's plan B. Uh, now we've moved on to plan C, D, E, D. We're probably desperate now. So this is what I've come up with next. Um, I'm gonna build a press. So I got this piece of all thread. It's on a pipe the size of the bearing inside, clear through the stern tube. Some washers on the end. I'm gonna to try to press this thing out, pull it out. Um, I'm gonna drill holes in some blocks, washers, nuts, put a socket on it, and see what we can do. So here we go. So when I pulled this cutlass, these cutlass bearings out, which by the way, why are there two? Is this normal? Everything I've kind of read, because I really don't know anything about this stuff. Um, everything I've read, so there's just like one four inch cutlass bearing in there. I ended up taking out two. They were stacked back to back like this inside this uh, stern tube. And with it came part of the brass stern tube or whatever this you know this goes in here this came out with it so I got to put this back in and then I guess because I don't know any better I'm gonna put two cutlass bearings back in this thing um, 
hopefully that's okay I mean that's what came out that's what's gonna go back in so so here we go so I don't know 100% what I'm doing here <clears throat> so please don't take this as a how-to this is more of a just kind of get it done type of thing hopefully it works out well so I'm thinking I'm just gonna pound this back in there is another piece of metal in here that I'm going to drill another hole and put a set screw clear through this into the new cutlass bearing. Um, that way I don't think this thing will spin out or... I got a brass hammer, copper pipe, the brass should be softer than the copper I think. I'm assuming this is copper. Um, so I shouldn't damage it up I hope. Here we go. So I've got my cutlass bearings, both of them, for whatever reason. Um, I stuck them in the freezer this morning. I'm hoping they kind of just slide right in there. Man, hold on. Didn't just slide in. Let me get my little persuasion. Ah, there it goes. There it goes. You know, I feel like just the one cutlass bearing is enough. I don't, again, I don't understand why there's two. But I guess I'm putting it in. I am going to line the grooves up that are in here with those. Otherwise, I feel like one might not get enough water in there for some, some lube. We're back inside the boat. <clears throat> um, I ran around the house, the storage room we have. We put all our boat parts in. I've scrounged around this boat. I finally found all the parts uh, for this uh, prop shaft. Um, well, I had all the parts. Where did I put them? Hold on. Here we go. Right here. Okay. So, uh, let's see here. All right. Got them. This is what's going on. This boat came with a dripless shaft seal? Dripless stuffing box? It's not a stuffing box, I'm going with dripless, hold on, it's getting really hot. Whew. I'm going with a um, dripless shaft seal, is what I think I'm calling this thing. Prop shaft comes through the stern tube. This clamps around the stern tube um, with two hose clamps. Prop shaft continues through this these bellows this guy clamps onto there vent up so it can um, uh, not airlock I guess and then this guy goes on the prop shaft so, oops, the wrong way slides down and goes like that this spins with the prop shaft like this this creates a watertight seal and that's it. Bob's your uncle, however that saying goes. So that goes on, and then the coupling to the engine, the transmission coupler, goes on, bolts to a rubber bushing, um, kind of like a dampener, a rubber dampener. Half of it's um, bolted to the transmission, the other half goes to here. I think that's really nice, there's a rubber separation, there's no, there can't be any electrical bond between them, like galvanic corrosion stuff. Little keyway. Bolt that on, done. Sounds simple, right? And then I can put my floor back together so when I come down this, these ladders here that I don't, this companionway step, I don't hit the ground. Um, I about broke my ankle a few times coming in here. So this is gonna be good to get done. Let's get started. Let me show you what I'm hooking up because you're not gonna be able to see this once I get my, once my butt's in here. This slips onto the stern tube and just clamps on these clamps. Slip the keyway in. I think I've sanded it enough. Hope I haven't tried it with the keyway. Oh, we are there. Yeah. Well, it wasn't so bad.
All right, guys, I just wrapped up. I got all the uh, bolts tight. I got the floor put back together. I got the dripless um, shaft seal put back on. I tensioned it. I think it's that little baffle. Like, I think you push on a little bit, so there's some spring-loaded pressure, maybe. I'm not sure how tight to do it, so I just kind of did something. Um, what felt right, you know. I'll check that when we get this in the water. I'll probably look up the manufacturer specs. You know, maybe do a little bit more research on that. But for now, it's all back together. Uh... I just got to put some seizing wire on those um, set screws and I think I am done. So project done. Complete. Loved it. It wasn't too bad. So anyways guys, thank you for watching. Um, check out our website. Join Patreon. It's always nice talking to you guys. Leave some comments. You know, it'd be nice to, to interact with you guys. So anyways, I'm out. See ya.